I am a former member of the New Age. I practiced cardamancy, worked with divination, and used a crystal ball. I made a lot of money predicting the future. I performed rituals for weddings, prosperity, good luck in dating, relationship destruction, and various matters of sentimental life. I once performed a ritual to make a girl fall for a boy. Through the rituals I performed on myself, I could attract any woman I wanted. I would prepare the rituals, perform them on my own body, and women would see me as a movie star. There was even a time I became invisible by using a potion on myself, and people could not see me, as if a powerful force concealed me from their sight. False Shepherds Many false shepherds befriended me because of the herbs of prosperity I used. I extracted oil from a plant, performed a ritual over it, and then sold it to people. Many pastors bought this oil, anointed their congregations with it, and prophesied prosperity. As a result, people landed well-paying jobs and secured positions in large companies. Satan deceived many, opening doors for jobs to enhance the credibility of these pastors. He also granted prophetic authority to his servants. I built a clientele of pastors who regularly bought my prosperity oil. These pastors never preached against the evil deeds I committed because they were complicit. The Antichrist One day, Satan possessed a woman and spoke to me through her, saying, At this moment, the greatest sorcerers are releasing demons to enter maternal wombs. These babies are special. They will be possessed even before birth. They will grow up to be future politicians, doctors, and judges who will help prepare the world for the Antichrist. You will be one of the men chosen to perform the opening ritual for this new era. I need you to increase your sorcerer level until you become one of the greats. The False Apostle This revelation astonished me. I was preparing to visit the church of one of my clients. This church belonged to an apostle who worked with what appeared to be a healing gift. He had lines of people in his church begging for prayers. This pastor laid hands on people, seemingly healing them of illnesses by transferring the disease to another person. Some individuals with cancer and other serious illnesses were cured, and the pastor received generous offerings in return. However, he transferred the illnesses to those who did not contribute. He warned them that curses would affect anyone who failed to support the ministry financially. Many of those who were cursed with sicknesses eventually died. Fear ruled his church, and the people gave their offerings to avoid being cursed, thereby funding Satan's work. Meanwhile, many serious faithful churches struggled to survive due to a lack of financial support. While I followed the New Age practices, I befriended this apostle, who told me everything that went on in his ministry. I also visited the church of a bishop who held great authority over demons. He could make all the possessed individuals in his church fall to the ground. This bishop lived in luxury, owning a large estate and ten cars, all funded by church money. He encouraged me to open a ministry myself to rise out of my humble situation. Though I made a lot of money as a New Age practitioner, the bishop considered me poor because I was not involved in the religious business world. One day, this bishop prophesied that a man would achieve prosperity, and within a few months, that man landed a high-paying job and bought a car, an apartment, and everything else he desired. I asked the bishop if his words truly had such power. He answered me, Yes, my words are prophetic. Everything I speak must be fulfilled. It's part of the contract I made when I sold my soul to the devil. I asked him, Do you know your soul is going to hell? He replied, I am aware of it, but I don't believe that place exists. I see it as Hebrew mythology, just as I don't believe in a heavenly paradise. Heaven and hell are made here on earth. Money is the God who determines whether we live in heaven or hell. You can create your heaven on earth with material wealth. I know the covenant I made, and I cannot go back. One day some people challenged his authority, and he prophesied that they would die. Days later, one of them committed suicide, another was murdered, and a woman who had defied the bishop died of an illness. The bishop told me, I have the power to bless and curse. All the pastors I interacted with were also followers of the New Age just like me. The New Age movement's goal is to unite all religions in preparation for the Antichrist. Pastors involved in the New Age cannot preach against sects. They must join forces to form a new religion. Buddhist concepts and philosophies are being integrated into the gospel. Spiritualist and Hindu teachings are entering the church. Taoism, Confucianism, Satanism, and other spiritualist beliefs are blending with Christian teachings. 
There is a fusion of these teachings to create a unified theology. When religious concepts are mixed together, they form a single religion with one God, the Antichrist. They are blending the pure with the profane, combining diverse teachings into one. As a result, we now have many evangelical offshoots. Movements like Neo-Pentecostalism, Liberation Theology, and Unitarianism have emerged. Church altars are desecrated with so-called miraculous objects, and ministers defile their pulpits with sinful lives. Today's Christian Church has stopped preaching against sin, which aligns with the New Age's plan to unite Catholics and Christians. This is the Antichrist's ecumenical project to unite all religions and people. As a New Age participant, I lost faith in the churches. Then, one day, an evangelist spoke to me about salvation and the love of Jesus. His words were unlike anything I had ever heard in other churches. He approached me on the street and told me that God wanted to use me on earth. I felt an intense anger and hatred rise within me. I do not know what came over me, but I jumped on him and punched him in the face. The man simply bowed his head and walked away. I had never lost control like that with Christians before. The devil used me in that moment to attack this man, for he was the first true Christian to approach me. Satan does not tolerate those in darkness getting close to Christians. When I interacted with other false Christians, they welcomed my presence. Satan didn't care when I was around them. But that simple evangelist disturbed me deeply. Darkness can mingle with darkness, but it can never coexist with light. Later as I went up the stairs at home, I became dizzy and fell. My mother called for help, and I was taken to the hospital with fractures in my leg, arm, and head. Remarkably, that same evangelist came to visit me there. He continued to speak to me about the greatness of God's work in my life and told me I would be raptured. None of my pastors or friends came to see me, but the evangelist I had attacked gave me strength and encouragement. I repented and asked for his forgiveness. I never imagined I would become a Christian, as I didn't believe in true conversion. But that day, I gave my life to Jesus. At first, I thought I would be physically healed by becoming a Christian, but the real transformation began in my heart. Deceived Deliverance Minister My health worsened, and I was nearing death when I suddenly found myself in the spirit world. I was in a dark place filled with the screams of desperate people. I saw the bishop, a friend of mine and founder of the Eastern Star Church of the Independent Gospel. This woman used to cast out devils and perform cures and miracles. She had died two years ago, and now her wrists were chained as demons struck her with spears. The demons taunted her, saying, Cast us out now, burn us with your fire. You never had the authority of the man up there. You were never able, we deceived you. They beat her mercilessly. She had died leaving behind several houses and cars, all accumulated through the church she founded. She used to dress in gold rings and expensive dresses, looking like a celebrity. A demon laughed at her and said, Do you know who used you? It was me. It was never the Holy Spirit. As I continued walking, I saw a young Christian woman being tormented in the fire of hell. She looked like a devoted Christian, with long hair and modest clothing. She screamed, Lord, forgive me. I will not go out to parties anymore. I didn't understand. I asked her, Why are you here? She replied, I went to parties at night with my non-Christian friends. My pastor never knew. One night after a party, my friends stayed behind and I went home alone. On my way, a group of men in a car forced me inside. I was drunk and couldn't escape. They took me far from the city, raped me, and the next thing I knew I woke up here. A demon tormenting the young woman stared at me with hatred but couldn't come near me. I didn't understand why the demons weren't attacking me. Then I looked at my body. It was surrounded by a yellow light, like fire. Hell is full of young Christians who secretly go to night parties hiding their actions from their parents and pastors. Now they suffer in torment. After this vision, I prayed to God about Christian youth. Jesus showed me demons possessing wicked young men, who then targeted Christian youth to invite them to parties. Satan set deadly traps for these Christians. Instead of winning souls for Jesus, these Christian youth fell into sin, while the wicked ones led them straight to hell. The devil didn't kill the young men working for him because they were useful as agents to lure Christians into death. Those who died for their disobedience were Christian youth. While the devil's agents were kept alive to continue their mission, Christian youth fell into death's trap. 
Jesus showed me these agents operating in schools, colleges, jobs, and even within churches. They infiltrate churches, befriending Christian youth to lead them astray. I continued walking through hell and saw three prophets burning in the fire. One of them, a prophetess, had been known for giving false prophecies to her church. She promised things that God never promised, telling people, God will give you this, or God will do that. She even set dates for God's supposed promises to come true. When her prophecies didn't happen, people lost their way and turned from Jesus. The Bible clearly says in Numbers chapter 23 verse 19, God is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? God always fulfills his promises, but what man promises in his name, he cannot always deliver. False prophets like her are now in hell, mocked by demons. False Visions A prophet found himself in hell for delivering false visions. One day, a demon disguised as an angel appeared to him and said, Tell the pastor to hold a healing campaign. The prophet obeyed, and soon, supposed miracles began happening. Every time this false angel gave the prophet instructions, he followed them. The demon provided false visions for the prophet to relay to the church, which caused confusion among the congregation. Many church members left. After the prophet died, he went straight to hell. False Tongues, False Prophecies I saw another prophet in hell who had once delivered revelations to his church. He lived in adultery, having an affair with a woman from another ministry. He believed he had received the gift of tongues, but it wasn't from God. When he died in his sin, he was sent to hell. A demon that tormented him said, I used you to deliver those false revelations. I am the spirit of divination that entered your life. I am the same spirit that works through fortune tellers, palm readers, and tarot card readers. I used your mouth to speak in tongues. I was horrified to learn that the gift this prophet thought came from God actually came from darkness. If you allow sin into your heart, you cannot receive God's true gifts. You must close your heart to evil to be filled with the Holy Spirit. The Madhouse Next, an angel of God took me out of hell and led me to a madhouse. The people there were tormented because they saw demons coming to disturb them at night. Doctors tried to calm them with drugs, claiming their experiences were hallucinations. But I saw the truth. Demons were tormenting these souls. The angel showed me how these evil spirits cause death and rebellion in the world. False Miracles The angel then took me to a church led by a reverend who performed many miracles. Behind him, I saw demons. The angel said, he has no authority from God. Light cannot mix with darkness. He does not have the Holy Spirit. God would never give his gifts to someone who uses them to deceive others. The Holy Spirit does not partner with filth or false ministers. God does not give his credentials to those who sell the gospel for profit. In that same church, I noticed a Christian girl with a bright light shining on her forehead. It was a seal from God. When the reverend approached her and placed his hand on her head, the light burned his hand, and he pulled away. As he continued preaching, black smoke, like a dark mist, poured from his mouth and spread through the air. The mist entered those who did not bear the seal of the Holy Spirit, and they became possessed by demons. However, those who were marked by the Holy Spirit remained untouched by the evil force. Rejecting the Calling The angel led me to the gates of heaven, where many Christians were denied entry. One missionary woman approached, but the angel refused to let her in. She protested, I'm chosen, I'm saved. But the angel replied, You were called to be a missionary, and you rejected your calling. You refused to do the work Jesus entrusted to you. The angel continued, Do you know how many people died because of your disobedience? 548 souls went to hell because you turned away from your mission. If you had chosen to fulfill your calling, the Holy Spirit would have led you to save them. The Lord will hold you accountable for every lost soul. For those who deny their mission, there is no salvation. You knew you had a calling and chose to ignore it. Jesus has turned his back on you. While you lived happily with your family, Jesus was sorrowful for your choice. The angel cited Matthew chapter 10 verse 37. He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me 
is not worthy of me. The angel continued, You chose your family over Jesus. You live for your family but refuse to live for the Lord. Now you are condemned to hell. The angel bound her hands and feet and cast her into hell. This is the fate of all missionaries who abandon God's mission to pursue worldly pleasures. Those whose names are not written in the book of life will be thrown into the darkness. False Miracles Next in line was a pastor. The angel searched for his name in the book of life, but did not find it. The pastor, panicked, exclaimed, This must be a mistake. I am a child of God born again. I've performed miracles. If I weren't his servant, he wouldn't have given me these gifts. The angel revealed a vision of his life. This pastor had been dedicated to God's work and was once filled with the Holy Spirit. A white dove, symbolizing the Spirit, had rested on him as he prayed for the gifts of healing and prophecy, and he received them. However, over time, pride entered his heart. As his ministry grew, he began to use these gifts in exchange for offerings. The vision showed the white dove departing from him, withdrawing the gifts of healing and prophecy. For a month, the pastor lived without the gifts. Instead of repenting, he arrogantly demanded that God return them. In his pride, he refused to humble himself. Eventually, an evil spirit took hold of his heart and restored the gifts of healing and prophecy. But these gifts were no longer from God. The pastor continued performing miracles and demanded large sums of money, thinking he had reconciled with God. In despair, the pastor realized, I was used by a demon to perform miracles. The angel said, God took the Holy Spirit and his gifts from you, just as he did with Saul. When Samson sinned, God withdrew his anointing. When Samson repented, the anointing was restored. But you did not repent. You died in your sins. The pastor begged on his knees, but the angel bound his hands and feet and cast him into outer darkness. A Return to Earth Though I did not enter the kingdom of heaven, I stood at the heavenly gates. The angel showed me a church on earth led by a blind pastor who was leading his flock down the wrong path. I shouted, You're going the wrong way. Turn to the right. But no one listened. The pastor called me a rebel, accusing me of inciting rebellion against his leadership. When I returned to earth, my health recovered. I realized that while I was in hell, the demons hadn't touched me because the evangelist had anointed my body before my experience. I had once loved the world, but now I love the ways of God. I stopped going to bars and started attending church. I burned posters of a singer I idolized, destroyed pictures of my football club, and threw away DVDs of my favorite actors' movies. I got rid of all the songs of my idols and tossed out my pornographic magazines. Instead, I started reading the Bible and Christian books. My wife also changed. She threw away her revealing clothes and bought modest outfits. However, she struggled to give up makeup and dyeing her hair. I told her that we needed to rid our home of anything that didn't honor Christ. Eventually, she left our home and never returned. A year after I continued doing God's work, my wife returned home. She confessed through tears. I've committed prostitution with several men, but I'm truly sorry. I want to live with you again. I looked at her and said, Just as God received Israel after she committed fornication with idols, I will also receive you. God hates divorce, and so do I. I will forget your past. You are forgiven. Let's live together. She wept, reconciled with God, and is now my wife again, my faithful companion. Everywhere I go, she is by my side, helping with my work in spreading the gospel. As an apologetic Christian, I've witnessed the New Age movement impose its philosophies through gospel songs, preparing the world for the Antichrist to reign. The New Age substitutes the true spiritual life of the Holy Spirit with counterfeit lies from demons. Satan's agents offer pastors enormous salaries to lead their congregations into this deception. Many pastors no longer serve out of love for God or souls, but for money and riches. We must be cautious. Not everything that promises advantages is good for our spiritual life. It's far better to live in hardship while serving God than to be a pastor with an astronomical salary who ends up in hell. Satan's strategy is to lure leaders into a ministry that disrupts their spiritual life, replacing Jesus at the center with money. I've personally received offers to lead churches with salaries that could change my life overnight. But I refuse to feed the flock of God while accepting millions from Satan 
or charging for my services to the Lord. We are called to bear fruit for Jesus. If we don't, we risk being cut off from his kingdom. The so-called millionaires of the kingdom produce rotten fruit contaminated by the world. Their fruit is poisonous, killing the spirit of those who partake and leading them to hell. These evil fruits make souls sick and satisfy the desires of the flesh, not the spirit. On the other hand, the fruit of true believers nourishes the soul and pleases God. These are the fruits of eternal life, satisfying people spiritually. Through the fruits of the Spirit, we nourish millions of hungry souls. It is through our lives that we offer them the food of heaven. May the peace of Jesus be with you, brothers and sisters. Amen. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, and I'll see you in our next video.